The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair, wore a belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, at this point, it's two or three weeks ago that one of our parishioners stopped me to talk. And the story was a, a very familiar story, a story that I've heard countless times over the course of 25 years as a priest. This particular gentleman told me that he had just gone to confession after 45 years and went on to describe how joyful he felt. You could see the joy in his face and the freedom that it brought him. And he said there were so many things that he had held on to for so long and how joyful he was that he finally let it all go. And the familiar story ended as I was used to it ending. I don't know what took me so long to go. The message this Sunday in the readings is very clear. Repentance. It's very clear. Advent theme, theme of repentance. For us, that call of confession to be reminded of the mercy, the love, the forgiveness of God. It's a very basic message. When I was growing up, and many of you know, I grew up in a very traditional home, you know, we went to confession twice a year as a family, Advent and Lent. We were marched off on a Saturday afternoon to confession, and I did not like going. And then as I got into college, and you know, in college you can do what you want, I still went to confession every Advent and Lent because that's what I was told to do. And I was uh, raised that way, so I, I went, and I did not like going. And eventually I made it to the seminary, and every year in the seminary, both at Advent and Lent, we had a penance service. And I went to confession because that's what we were supposed to do. I did not care for it. And... Uh, then I was ordained a priest 25 years ago, serving my first assignment at Holy Spirit in North Buffalo. And I stood in a pulpit fam similar to this one and told everyone, you better go to confession. It's Advent. And so I went to confession too, because I wasn't going to be a hypocrite and tell you to go and not go myself, you know. And I still didn't have to care for it all that much. <laughs> and then... About two years after I was ordained, 
We had the opportunity to go to Denver, Colorado. Pope, now Saint John Paul II, was coming for World Youth Day. Five days of prayer and reflection with our Holy Father. And the entire focus of World Youth Day in Denver, Colorado, was on reconciliation and the sacrament of penance. And for five days, listen to many a talk, some from our Holy Father, some from other bishops, leaders, lay people of the church. And uh, a very unique thing happened in Denver those days as we were walking around, something that the seminary did not prepare me for. I was hearing confessions everywhere. Our teenagers were coming asking to go to confession. I vividly remember standing in line at Walgreens checking out sunscreen and a teenager came up and said, would you hear my confession? Seminary didn't prepare me for that. You know, I remember ordering my lunch at Burger King and one of the teenagers came up and said, would you hear my confession? I said, well, I really like my Whopper and onion rings is what I would really like, but of course I will hear your confession. And, and no matter where I was those days, teenagers were always stopping on the street asking, will you hear my confession? And uh, they really changed me. These were very powerful confessions. I do not remember anything of what was told to me. But what I do remember was the depth, the sincerity, the real desire that these young people wanted to be right with the Lord and to be forgiven of their sins. That I remember. And they uh, really changed me that from that point forward, I, I now go to confession basically every week. And I, like that young man two, three weeks ago here in church, like those teenagers back in Denver, experience a great joy because uh, I am reminded of the Lord's mercy, his forgiveness, his real gift of freedom. Really, the first reading of the prophet Isaiah, the reading is about freedom. Freedom not only of our sins and the joy that it can bring here in this world, but really the freedom of the restoration of, of Israel and the freedom that resides only with God eternally. And so this Advent day, we're reminded of the importance of reconciliation. And this Tuesday, we have our penance service, 7 o'clock. We will have about 20 priests coming here, which is no small percentage of the priests of the Diocese of Buffalo. We're getting fewer in number. And I went to great pain and hard work to contact the meanest, roughest, most harshest priests available. Unfortunately, none of them were free that night. And so only nice, kind ones will be here. <laughs> filled with the Lord's mercy and desire to fill that compassion of the Lord with you. All of us have something we need to let go of. All of us have something that maybe troubles us dearly, deeply. If it be something from years gone by, if it be something that bothers us day in, day out, all of us have that something. And we have the opportunity this Tuesday especially, but every day in the sacrament of penance, to be reminded of the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. And in so doing, to have joy here in this world, freedom here in this world, preparing, as St. Peter says in the last line of the second reading, to be ready, unblemished, for that unknown day and hour when the Lord will call us eternally. The message today repentance.